definitely is not European, but also, of course, not black African. It must be either South American or Asian culture. But then again, we are at the point 10 to 12,000 years ago. It might be the civilization, the lost civilization from Atlantis. Close to this area in Sierra Leone, Professor Pitoni was in charge of diamond excavations. And as he heard in this area, a legend about Allah was angry with some angels and he put them into stone and throw them to the earth. He put the sky, also made it into stone and throw it to the earth and he put the stars and threw them to the earth. The legion says that the sky you can see on this stone, they call them sky stones, sky blue stones found in this area under the earth. And we did research in Vienna. This is definitely artificial stone. It's not a natural stone and all the material could be found, but the only thing they could not inform us is what kind of color did they use to get this real sky blue color. The stone figurines found from 20 meters down to even 50 meters. Professor Pitoni always took some organic material from the finding place and the age dating of those stone artifacts are from 2500 years up to the oldest one 17 thousand years. Here you have a granite stone, so-called nomoli, stone nomoli, with very nice encarving. Here you have a man sitting on an elephant, as there are also the legions of giants all over Africa. You know how big is an elephant. It's a wonderful stonework. It's very hard and very heavy. There are also some artifacts showing half human or human with the head of a reptile holding a kind of pot in their hand and they could put something inside this pot and also on top of several nomolis there is a hole for putting something inside and most probably they were used for ceremonies. Here you have a kind of animal, it looks like a dinosaur and when Professor Pitoni found this statue it was making a strange noise so he opened the statue and they found inside the small black ball you can see on the bottom of the statue and this was iron material. When we did the research on this artifact and especially on this metal ball, next morning the professor called me and told me that somebody must have done a bad joke to me. I asked why? Because the result of the research was this metal material is chrome steel and chrome steel was found first time at the beginning of the 20th century in Austria. That means it was impossible inside a statue with the age of approximately 17,000 years. But when I called immediately Professor Pitoni, he was laughing and he said, I'm a geologist. If a statue is making a strange sound, I do not open it just right away, but I did several x-rays and you can see here on the right picture one of the x-ray photos and you see that inside the closed statue already the round ball, the chrome steel ball was existing. On this x-ray photo you can see exactly and also Professor Pitoni saw that this statue in former days already was opened but perfectly closed again and he called a specialist who opened it exactly concerning this photo, the small stone ball which was closing the hole inside and you can see that the metal ball was already existing. 
Some of you might have watched several pictures, photos on the internet of giants, giant skeletons found in desert, in India, in China and other places. Most of those photos were competition photos to present Photoshop. Perfectly done. I also was quite impressed when I received first time one of those photos. But these photos I'm showing you now, they are definitely not coming out from a Photoshop competition. These photos are real skulls and skeletons. This skull was found in a tunnel system underground in Colombia. The skull is dated up to 11,000 years. The skull is bigger than normal skull and the front teeth of the jaw are lined up in a different way than our teeth. Something that occurs to me here is that there's a very strong pronounced jaw, it's a very prominent jawline, very prominent chin. And here you see a photograph that was shown to us by a Project Camelot insider. Now this isn't a real photograph, this is a scene from the old Arnold Schwarzenegger movie Conan the Barbarian. And what you're seeing here is a special effect on the actor James Earl Jones. The critical thing here is the shape of the jawline. Our witness, who had spent time with the Anunnaki in real time, in the present day, said that one of the things that characterizes them besides their size which he says was eight or nine feet tall he said they're very large and they're very strong and they look larger than that but that's round about their height which matches exactly the 2.6 meters that Klaus has been talking about he said this is a very prominent strong jawline and this is what strikes me about these skeletons these skulls here that we're looking at right now didn't know no that. you need to know this Back to class. So once again, here you have a very old photo done in a museum in La Valletta in Malta. And it shows several long skulls. And the explanation is deformed skulls, but they are very long going to the back. This is one of several very, very strange skulls. They are presented in a small museum in Ica, in Peru. Ica is located close to the famous Nazca lines and the museum is called Museo Maria Reiche. The German lady who was researching her whole life about the Nazca lines and in this museum you can see the most strange skulls I ever saw. All found in this area close to the Nazca lines. So the question is what kind of humans were living there and how did they get those skull forms? And especially this one, definitely several doctors and experts told me it would not be possible to create such a kind of deformation because through deformation you do not get the double bone material on the skull and on this skull even you have particles of the skin and hairs and I think it would not be difficult to do a age dating and especially a DNA analysis of this skull. On this picture I show you some legendary skeleton forms of giants in the year of 1964 in the south of Ecuador in the province Loja there broke down a part of a mountain platform and Father Carlos Vaca who was working as a priest in hospitals he was called to this place and he found the broken bones of a giant. Good. Well Klaus I asked you if you would take us on a journey and for the last nearly an hour I think it is you've taken us on a fascinating journey not only around the world but through time back as long ago as 17,000 years and it's a real reminder of how little we know 
about what our history really is. These are important pieces of an important puzzle and you're doing an enormous amount to raise people's awareness of what it is that we're not shown in many museums, what it is that we don't read in anthropological textbooks, and what it is that many university professors still refuse to recognize. And thank you so much for your part in helping to raise our own understanding of our history on planet Earth. Klaus, thank you.